You may be seated. You okay? <laughs> oh, dude. Yes. Well, dear, dear friends and family, we're gathered here today before our holy and good God to witness and celebrate the uniting of Tyler and Nicole in marriage. And this is a special day, a day to rejoice together, friends and family, you guys to rejoice, to rejoice in the love that you have for one another. And you've already gotten a taste of that on the walk down. Good thing you have a strong best man because he almost, he almost didn't make it, Nicole. Um, it's a day to rejoice and a day to, you know, really reflect, reflect on God's love for us, God's love for you guys, your love for one another. And also for those who are gathered, it's a time to partake because you're not here as mere spectators just to watch this thing that's happening, but actually to be uh, witnesses and a community who agrees with these vows that will be taken and in agreement uh, decides to support and love these guys as they journey from wedding into beautiful marriage. Part of what is on display here is a picture of Tyler's favorite verses in Revelation 19. <laughs> The heavenly throne room, Christ receiving his bride, just the culmination of all joy, all happiness, all beauty, all love, all good news. Uh, that God himself, through his son, would receive for himself a beautiful, pure, and glorious bride. And that's what we're reflecting today as you two receive one another. So who gives this woman to be married to this man? Tyler, you may go and get your bride. Watch the bride, watch the bride. All right, you guys, come on over. I want you to be able to get as close as you want. Don't worry about this mic, we can move that, okay? So, Nicole, if you take a step forward, probably, yeah. Checking on rings? Yeah. Okay, good. All right, let's pray together. We had to check on rings. We've got the rings. We've got the rings. The Lord provided a cloud. Hallelujah. So uh, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for who you are and who you have revealed yourself to be, both in creation and the gift of marriage, but also in redemption. And that picture we just thought of in Revelation 19, you are love and you love love. And you are so thankful with us but even more thankful than we dare imagine about the joining of Tyler and Nicole, the knitting of their lives and their hearts and their stories. Lord, you have brought them together. There are absolutely no accidents here. And even last night at the rehearsal, as we reflected on the journey that they've both had to get here to this day, Lord, it is a story of your hand and guidance and mercy and goodness. So would you be glorified today? Would Nicole and Tyler be filled with joy um, they are here. They look amazing. Nicole is radiant. Tyler is still standing. And <laughs> Father, we're just, we're just thankful. This is a, a foretaste of heaven in every way. And so would we just rejoice in the ability to partake in that. We pray these things in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We're now going to have a reading from God's Word. These guys know that there was a couple scriptures to choose from, but... You know, because we have the scientist and the artist, you know, alchemy mixing together, uh, Nicole really kind of picked this, I think, a pretty bold and fierce text from the Old Testament book of Ruth, the, the gospel according to Ruth, as it were. So here's some verses from Ruth chapter 1, verse 12 through the first part of 19. Turn back, my daughters, go your way, for I am... Too old to have a husband, Naomi said. If I should stay, I, if I should say I have hope, even if I should have a husband this night and bear sons, would you therefore wait till they were grown? Would you therefore refrain from marrying? No, no, my daughters, for it is exceedingly bitter to me for your sake that the hand of the Lord has gone out 
against me, and your husbands and mine have died. Then they lifted up their voices and wept together, Ruth, Orpha, and Naomi. And Orpha kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. And she said, Naomi said to Ruth, See, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, Do not urge me. Do not urge me to leave you or to return from following you. For where you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. For where you die, I will die. And there with you, I will be buried. May the Lord do so to me and more also if anything but death parts me from you. Till death do us part. And when Naomi saw that Ruth was wholeheartedly determined to go with her, she said no more. So the two of them went on until they came to the city of Bethlehem. And when they came to Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred. The whole town was stirred because of them. This is the word of God. We're going to spend just a few minutes before we get to covenant vows and rings reflecting here on this text because when two people who love the Lord get married, right, this is a, it's a worship service actually. We have a call to worship here through the scripture. We leave through a benediction and a beautiful upcoming kiss. We're here to really reflect on your love for each other, but also on the nature of God himself and his love for you. And it's been a real honor to, to walk with you guys in these past couple of months just to get to know you. It's, you know, it is a classic tale, of course, of Beauty and the Beast, right? You know, the artist Beauty and the Brain, I guess. We got some lab people here, so I'm already feeling the, uh, you know, radiological brain power emanate in the audience, but you know, you guys are a story of really the, the artistry, the sewing as it were, Nicole, <laughs> the, seam, the seeming and seamstressing that the Lord does when he writes and unites two stories together. Earlier when we were down in the room with the guys, Tyler said, God has truly, truly always been there for me and my life and my story. And that's why I'm here today with Nicole. Amen. A beautiful story. A beautiful story and two beautiful people. I mean, that's why we're here, right? We love these guys. We care about them. They're fun. They're kind. They're strong. We heard in speeches last night from two of your friends, you know, just about kind of the, the great friend that you are, Nicole, and the wonderful person that you are. We see in your own lives God's faithfulness, your faithfulness, to each other in the paths that you've walked. So yes, we are here to celebrate, to celebrate your love and your affection, the story of Tyler and Nicole, and the story of the Lord. All right, 15 minutes in, only another three hours. <laughs> That's a perfect opportunity to do the awkward pause, which I love to do. and. So I'd like you guys just really quick to look out. Take a deep breath and look out at who's here. Take a look, seriously. Soak it in. Make it weird. Enjoy it. This is your wedding. It's all about you. <laughs> because it just goes so fast, right? And if you've been a bride, most of you would, would know. It's like you barely remember anything. So just to soak in the folks that have come, even from all across the country, to join in saying yes and amen to this union of two beautiful people. We're going to consider that beauty and power now from Ruth just in a few different ways. We're going to look at our call in marriage, our challenge, our choice, and finally just kind of a charge to you guys in your marriage. So first of all, your call in marriage is to taste and see that the Lord is good and his gifts are good. Psalm 34 says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Marriage is good. The sadness of Ruth and Orpha and uh, Naomi, the sadness is objective at the loss of these husbands because the goodness is also objective. This isn't like some weird character in a modern TV show where it's ambiguously moral. 
You know, are they good or are they bad? Marriage is objectively and truly good. It is a creation of God. It is a gift of God in creation before the fall. And God knows that that we're not meant to be alone. He looks at Adam. He says, you're not meant to be alone. We long for a true helpmate, a partner in crime, to be fully known and fully loved. That's one of the most powerful things in the whole universe. It is nuclear. It is atomic. It is incredible to be known by someone. For them to see you and see all the stuff that other people don't see and to still love you. To be better together. This is God's creative artistry and genius at work. So marriage is a gift given, not in any way to limit freedom. You know, I was just talking to two seconds ago before we got up here. Like, oh, everything's going to change, man. Yeah, for the better, by God's grace. There's no deprivation here. There's an abundance of generosity to be fruitful, to multiply, to build, to have dominion, and to reflect the very nature of God himself. In creation, there is only one time when God said, it is very good. He said it is good when he created, you know, the skies and the lands and the birds and the animals and everything else, the flowers, all the beauty. But there's only one time he said it is very good. And that is when he joined the first husband with the first wife for his glory and for their joy and for the life of the world. So that's your call in marriage. Taste and see. But there are challenges, right? There are challenges and we get to talk about those here. Again, this in no way takes away from the joy. That's a worldly way of thinking. It's the opposite. It actually adds to the joy. Look at Ruth in our text. She makes this courageous decision. Courage. I learned a little French today, and some you and, uh, you know, Emily can correct me later. But, you know, basically the root of the the etymology of courage is like strength from the heart to some extent. Love always has within it, true love has within it inherently risk. And Ruth's decision to go with Naomi, to walk by faith, to trust God, to trust her, is powerful because it really addresses our deepest fear, which any relationship that stays together over a long time brings up. And that is this, will the promise hold? Or to put it in Ruth's language, will the other one return? Right, this is fun, this is awesome. This is about to be free food and free drinks for all y'all. This is great. But when the honeymoon's over, that's the question. Will the promise hold? And because we live in a world that is both beautiful and broken, Uh, This question really reveals our deepest need if we're honest with ourselves, because the nature of our brokenness, which is sometimes referred to as sin, that's not some dirty word. It's about self-love and self-protection. It's about curving in on ourselves to cope, to care, and protect ourselves so that we don't get hurt. And that is isolating. Interestingly, it can look like either fear and anxiety on one hand or pride on the other. And it can express itself and trigger itself as a result of our wounds, our our baggage, our shame. These are things that we all have. And what happens here is we tend to, because of these challenges, become very conditional, right? Will he return? Will I return? Okay, let's make a bargain. 50-50. You do your share, I'll do my share. Which works until you only do 49% of the dishes. (laughs) The conditional never works. Because what's predicated in the conditional is us keeping an eye out for them really not pulling their weight. Or as we've all, you know, we've heard John say a bunch, having to sing for your supper. So what do we tend to do sometimes? Make it spiritual. Not 50-50, 100-100, right? But again, that still doesn't escape the conditional paradigm. It still exists within the challenge. There's a better way. A way of grace, a way of self-sacrificial love, which we only have hope for by the grace of God because of his love for us in just this way. Not 50-50, not 100-100, but 100-0. So our core question here in the challenge is, can I be fully known, seen, seen over time, the blemishes, the needs, everything else, and still loved? And that's why we call a marriage a covenant ceremony. Right? It's not just a, you guys think each other are good looking and we're feeling it today ceremony. Right, which you are. Yes, amen, Nicole, you are. 
you are looking good and you are feeling it. But we take vows based on promises because the challenges are real and those challenges are always changing. So when things get tough, for better, for worse, sickness, health, rich or poor, challenges, will we just throw this away? No. Following by faith after God's very own example, we must return. And so in that sense, you two standing here, we talked about this when we met up. This is really kind of like a protest. It's kind of radical. I mean, it really is. To say, I'm going to love you, not just because you're lovely to me, but I'm going to set my love upon you in promise and commitment, believing that in that, loveliness will flow. Not fear, not control, not undone by the unknown, because like Ruth, what you do know now is enough to return. And that is that the Lord himself has returned for you. That's our challenge. We also have a choice in marriage. Ruth says, where you go, I will go. She is determined. She even says to Naomi, do not urge me. She's tough. And so that's a question for you guys in your marriage. Not just the hard times, but the great times, the joys and the sorrows. Where will you go? And I want to encourage you, go to your story. You guys know our favorite New York pastor, Tim Keller who had interviewed a uh, you know, psychologist out there in New York, and she said, if you've been married for 50 years, you've functionally been married to five different people. Not literally five different people, but like, it's like being married to different people because people actually change. When I first got married, I was allowed to eat McDonald's. All right, those days are over. It's all kale now for God's glory. So you have to go back to your story because you change and you change, and, and what's gonna hold you guys together is seeing faithfulness from God through you to you in your story. That's why the Bible says a cord of three strands cannot be broken. The book of Psalms does this all the time. Sing and recall your story. God's faithfulness to you as you choose to be faithful to one another. Secondly, go to forgiveness. I once heard a counselor say, and I think this is true in my experience, that kind of the number one killer of relationships is contempt. You know, death by a thousand cuts. It never, it never starts usually with one like big crazy thing that someone does. And, and death by a thousand cuts and contempt is built upon the sinking sand foundation of a will to justify oneself and remain justified. I'm right, you're wrong, here's my list as to why. Self-justification flees being reconciled because it is a fruit of pride and heart-heartedness. So we have to listen to Jesus' words to Peter, right? Peter says, how many times should we forgive someone? In those days, the Jews said three. Peter thought he was being extra spiritual because he's Peter and he's special. So not three times, but seven times. And Jesus blows it out of the water. He goes, not seven, but 70 times seven, Peter. Choose to forgive because you have been forgiven. The one who has loved much, loves much. The one who has forgiven much, forgives much. And finally, go to service in your roles. We talked about this. A marriage is like an infinity symbol. Man and woman, equal and glorious in creation and dignity, and yet you both have purposeful and strong roles to fulfill, to serve one another as a servant leader, humble servant leaders to one another. And so I'm glad that you chose this gritty, artistic, very Santa Fean text. This isn't just some weird Christianese platitude or a bumper sticker. It's just some hardcore stuff here that Ruth does that shows us what it means to really live with God and with each other in this kind of choosing self-sacrificial love. You waited, you prayed, you trusted, and now you are here. So finally, your charge. We're told that when these ladies get back to town in Bethlehem, you know, Naomi and this Moabite Ruth, what the heck is going on? We're told the whole town is stirred. This is my charge to you guys. As you get married, open up your homes, your doors, your lives, your kitchen table, and stir the town. Because we've seen, we've seen it all in Santa Fe. We've seen 743 different versions of narcissism and you know, finding myself and self-actualization, 
We've seen it all. What we don't have enough of in this place that we love that God has put us is just opening up your lives and your homes and your tables to generously and abundantly give to love the people that God's put in your life. No strings attached. Not treating anyone like a project or being weird. Just loving deeply and abundantly for you've been loved in that way. Ruth's story is a powerful story of redemption, of the old made new, of promises kept, of promise over pleasure, of hope, of joy. And that story is your story and it has to be shared. This is why God created in the first place. Because God who is love cannot help but share that love with his creation as he brings together today a new creation to being made into one flesh my charge to you is that you would do the same because in your union in your community in this being known and loved you are now for the lonely you are now for the unloved you are now for those who are in need in the city you are now for those who don't have arms wrapped around them and in this is happiness and like Ruth, that's what stirs the town. So Tyler and Nicole, may you be blessed. Your call is clear to taste and see. And I believe you are up to the challenge. In that I pray you would affectionately choose because you have been chosen in love each other and charge headlong into the joyous adventure that's set before you. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your good word. Thank you for Ruth. This gritty, awesome, fierce lady who teaches us some beautiful things about you. We get to taste and see that you are good and know that you will return. You will never leave us or forsake us. And it's your very love conditioned on nothing that stirs the town, Lord. So would you do all of that in the lives of Tyler and Nicole, who we love so deeply. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. All right, we're now going to have some covenant vows. If vows sounds legal, it is. With all due respect to the glorious Estado de Nuevo Mexico, uh, the state, this is where it happens, man. This is where it gets made official. These binding oaths and promises, and we don't just like sneak off into the sangres to do it together by the river with a candle. We do it publicly with witnesses. Before God and one another, these promises are sealed. Tyler, do you take Nicole to be your wife, to have and to hold from this day forward for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and cherish and serve her till death do you part? I do. <laughs> Nicole, do you take Tyler to be your husband, to have and to hold from this day forward for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer. Sorry, I was just staring into your eyes for a second. <laughs> Let's hope it's not the four minute one. Might be. Might be. <laughs> I absolutely do. We were warned that they were doing one of these and they did a four minute bell session. So, okay, we're good, we're good. All right. In sickness and in health, in bells and in silence, to love and to cherish and to serve him till death do you part. Absolutely. Amen. <laughs> All right, now we come to the rings. And we do have rings. Uh, All right, we'll get those in a second. <laughs> Traditionally, the wedding ring's been an outward sign, right? It's an outward sign of an inward and spiritual bond. This, this happens across cultures, but it was uh, predominantly found in the rites of our tradition because it's a visible reminder to you and your spouse and everyone around you that you are taken. <laughs> it proclaims that your love for each other has no end. Like Christ's love for you, it is to be clear, tangible, and beautiful all your days on earth. So Tyler, do you have a ring for Nicole? Yes, it's pretty wonderful. All right, take Nicole's left hand, and yeah, dude, this thing's so weird. All right, don't put it all the way on yet, dude. Back it up. There you go. With this ring, 
<laughs> with this ring. I pledge my life and love to you. I pledge my life and love to you. Before God and these witnesses. Before God and these witnesses. I am yours and you are mine. I am yours and you are mine. All right, go for it. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, Nicole, do you have a ring for Tyler? Ooh, Please take Tyler's left hand. <laughs> and just repeat after me, Nicole, with this ring. With this ring. I pledge my life and love to you. I pledge my life and love to you. Before God and these witnesses. Before God and these witnesses. I am yours and you are mine. I am yours and you are mine. You guys st just stay there. Okay, so this isn't in the way. We can hold hands. All right, let's stand. We're actually going to sing together. We're going to sing In Christ Alone. It should be printed off in your bulletin. This was a special request from Nicole and Tyler, so please join us in song. Be seated. Well, per Tyler's request, the surprise, it's time for second sermon. <laughs> <laughs> now we, we have reached the end. It's time for the pronouncement and a benediction and a few other things. But let's celebrate together Tyler and Nicole before our God and these faithful witnesses, both friends and family, and by the power vested in me by the Presbyterian Church in America, I now pronounce you man and wife. <laughs> Receive this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. 
Tyler, you may now kiss your bride. All right, you guys, we are going to ask that uh, family stay up close here after the recessional for some pictures. Everybody else, we're going to clear this out and have a cocktail hour here in this perfect weather uh, before dinner, which I believe will be seated around 6 p.m. On behalf of the families, of course, thank you so much for celebrating this joyous evening with us. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to present to you for the very first time Dr. and Mrs. Tyler Remedis. Oh. 